Today is a historic day and I really believe the time will come when people are going to go back to this day and study what happened. Today was supposed to be the day when Korean media is able to take down Suga and by extension BTS. Suga appeared to the police station to answer questions about him in relation to him driving an electric scooter while drunk. He actually paused bowed to the media and apologized before going in for questioning and the blackmailers the liars and the paid puppets actually started writing articles and uploading those articles and publishing photos in different publications but something unbelievable happened an eight-year-old song of Shoga actually hit number one in us itunes several of his songs entered top 50 of us itunes another song actually reached number one in about 50 different countries and for several hours suga became the most consumed artist in the world but more importantly bts armies were actually able to control two of the biggest platforms in the world in relation to this incident twitter and neighbor they were also able to not just control but but beat not just one publication but the entire korean media that were actually trying to spread lies and misinformation. If you go to Naver, you won't be able to find the articles written about this unless you actually actively search for it. And that is a credit to Kore uh, Korean armies and some international armies helped as well. And if you go to Twitter, you won't find the photos and the videos being spread. And many accounts that were trying to spread it were actually getting taken down or many of them were being forced to go on private. And this is the first time a fandom actually managed to do that. This actually confirms what we all know to be true a long time ago, that BTS is in a very unique position because not only are they the only Korean act that became this big globally, they did so without owing anything to the Korean media and they still don't owe anything to Korean media to this day. Truth be told, they don't owe any media in any part of the world anything because the attention that they're getting is really a result of their success, not the cause of it. And I think that's really what's getting to Korean media because for years the media served the purpose they were the go-between the public and the products or the services or the artists but BTS essentially rendered them useless by going directly to fans and that is the short version of the video <laughs> you can stay on if you want to understand how BTS and armies actually made this happen Many don't know that BTS's debut was actually luck. But when I say luck, I mean opportunity meets their hard work. Big Hit was a struggling agency when they were starting. They were actually on the verge of bankruptcy and they only had one group, a girl group. But they had to disband after one of the members was indicted for blackmailing a pretty popular Korean actor. They were called last minute to fill in a slot for a show when someone actually canceled. They were actually there as a filler. In other words, they managed to actually get a spot on a show simply because the station and the TV show didn't have a choice. The North American recognition actually came first. 2014 KCON in LA was a turning point for BTS's career when Bang shi -yuk saw how the North American audience was reacting to BTS's performance, they actually had the worst slot, the first one. He knew there was something there and he had to capitalize on that indicator. In the Harvard Business Review paper written about the success of BTS, Bang shi -yuk actually said that the screams of the fans was different with BTS. It wasn't just polite claps or courteousness. It was an actual response to the performance of BTS. That was when he asked BTS if they wanted to give North America a try. That North American appeal was further confirmed when BTS entered Billboard 200 for the first time in December 19, 2015 with The Most Beautiful Moment in Life Part 2. They got their first Billboard performance invitation then. 
and this was when they practically had no marketing budget so their album performing well in the u.s was a real sign that they had a potential in north america and fans were actually responding to it however instead of being recognized back home the media and fans of other groups actually accused bts and big hit of illegally buying their own albums just to rank higher than other groups because that year something quote-unquote miraculous happened bts actually outsold who was then the most popular boy band big bang by may of next year 2016 the most beautiful moment in life young forever entered billboard 200 at 107 by october wings entered at number 26 it was absolutely monumental they toured Asia, selling more than 200,000 tickets. They were already making waves internationally. But their first grand prize award in South Korea happened only after that. They got their first desang November of 2016. But BTS was already advancing in the North American market before even being respected by the Korean media. In fact, they were already scheduled to do an American leg of their Wings tour by the time they got their first desang. They sold out all the venues and were interviewed by People, iHeartRadio, and JBTV, and of course, the Billboard. This is during their Wings tour. Nobody could explain the success even then. No one could understand how BTS has become so successful in North America with barely any promotion. Direct to consumer, aka direct to fans. Unlike other groups, BTS had to make up for the lack of traditional marketing budget by directly communicating with fans. With no social media manager, BTS members were the ones directly uploading their content on their official Twitter account and they were also directly talking to fans through live stream. Later on, Big Hit developed their own platform, Weverse. As BTS later on explained, they weren't really trying out a marketing strategy. They were simply trying different ways on how to promote themselves and more importantly, communicate with fans. What they didn't know was they were actually revolutionizing the way artists were communicating with their fans. And they were also creating a new marketing model for artists. Skipping TV appearances. BTS did try to appear on certain variety shows, but after less than stellar experiences, BTS decided to create their own show, Run BTS and BTS Gayo. The two shows eventually merged. They have since created other specials such as BTS in the Soup and Bon Voyage. All this are released directly to consumers or directly to the fans. They also pioneered short-form content called Bangtan Bomb series in their own YouTube channel, Bangtan TV. There is no specific format. Usually, they will just take behind the scenes when they're shooting music videos, when they are rehearsing. Sometimes it's just the members doing mundane daily things or the members delivering a short message to their fans just to say hello. The only thing that mattered was they were regularly and directly communicating with their fans. In 2017, they also released Burn the Stage, a YouTube exclusive series documenting their tour and other activities. They have since released several documentaries, all of which are released in global streaming platforms like Disney Plus, YouTube, or Amazon videos. And as we know, they've also released their documentaries on theaters. Controlled environment with Korean media. Now, BTS didn't totally ignore Korean media, but they were always in an environment BTS and Big Hit fully controlled, primarily through their global conferences. With such a formal setting, questions are really geared towards understanding the creative process, 
the creative direction, the meaning behind the music, and they don't really deal with personal things or nonsensical questions. In other words, with these global conferences, BTS managed to elevate their position as artists and command the kind of respect real artists deserve. Also, Big Hit's own platform wrote articles about BTS and released different interviews. BTS appeared in North American and European shows more often, owing perhaps to the more loose format of interviews, but more so because that's really the stage where they are competing, the global one. Live streaming. BTS preferred communicating directly with their fans through live streaming as an entire group, as units, or solo. They would do so after every major performance or right after a milestone such as winning an award. They often directly explain the process of creating their albums, the stories of their songs, and answered questions of fans directly. It really eliminated the need to do interviews with the media. BTS also became too big to be contained in Korea. I think the more painful part for Korean media and Korean entertainment-related companies is how BTS has become so big that their real competitions, quote-unquote, are actual global artists, from the Beatles to Eminem. Both fans and international media write about their U.S. and European chart rankings, achievements, activities, that their ranking in Korean charts don't get the same attention. When they release albums or singles, fans look at global charts and not so much on Korean ones. The Korean media do not exercise power over those charts, over those international institutions, and definitely not over international fans. There is almost nothing they can say that would grab the attention of international fans or could possibly affect the opinions and preferences of the international audience. For example, Jimin's Who. It's dominating international charts and no one really asks about how it's performing in the Korean ones. Just like how international artists like Eminem aren't charting in Korea but are charting in the US and Europe, BTS performances are measured in those same charts, not local ones. Again, that renders any kind of opinion or anything that the Korean media could say that could actually affect international rankings and the way the international audience could perceive BTS. BTS is really a global artist and I'm sort of surprised that many people still don't get it and they still don't get what comes with it. And what comes with it is really a shield because we're not international fans are not concerned about the same things Koreans are concerned about. So you may be making something a big deal when to us it's irrelevant, just like this one. And so we're not under the control or influence of Korean media or Korean culture for that matter. And quite frankly, especially in the West, we just want our artists to continue creating music that we like, that we can relate to, and to continue entertaining us. And for as long as it's there, we're good. At this point, the only thing that can break that bond between international armies and BTS would be BTS themselves. If they do something drastically bad, I think. I don't see that happening. But today, I think, as I've said in the intro, it's going to go down to history because this is the first time when a fandom with no leader, actual leader, actually managed to overpower two of the biggest companies in the world, biggest platforms in the world, neighbor on Twitter on this specific issue. And they managed to really disempower traditional media, not just publications, but actual media. And I hope in the future... Other fandoms are going to benefit from this, learn how to do it and benefit from this. But more importantly, I hope that armies themselves, ourselves, would actually continue honing this strategy because it's going to come in handy in the future for sure. Um, I'm just happy that the worst is over. At least my belief is that the worst is over. 
um, we can now concentrate in just enjoying the music, the releases, the different creative projects that they are giving us until they come back in 2025. So let's just continue our support continue leaving messages on weavers continue leaving positive things about them on our social media and continue supporting their music and projects um i would love to hear your thoughts let me know what you did how you reacted how is it going for you now and how you're holding up leave them in the comment section below please if you ended up liking this video give it a thumbs up subscribe and hit that notification bell, and of course share the video if you can Follow me on Patreon. I do have a free membership if you just want to try things out. Also, follow me on Twitter uh, or X and on Instagram. Thank you.